Good afternoon, everybody. Hey, family, how you doing? Good to see you. Folks, uh, a week ago, Hurricane Helene became one of the strongest hurricanes ever, ever. It hit Florida and this part of Georgia. Roofs ripped off the buildings. Massive trees crashed into power lines, setting off loss of heat, electricity. Flooding wiped out homes. We were just down in Florida to see homes that were, I mean, just wiped away. Just, just the entire island gone. Families, they lost everything, including, including loved ones, including family members. And I know it isn't the first time. Just over a year ago, a major hurricane hit these same communities. A couple months ago, Hurricane Debbie did the same thing. Three in a row. Three in a row. You've been through hell. Three in a row. And I want you to know, I see you, I hear you, I grieve with you, and I promise you we have your back. We're going to stay until you're restored. Earlier today, I was briefed by Florida officials on the damage, and I met with first responders who've been working nonstop to provide aid and support to survivors. I did a walking tour of Keaton Beach with a bipartisan group of officials to survey what a 15-foot surge, 15-foot surge, some places went as high as three stories, does to a coastal community. Then I came here to Georgia to meet all of you to see firsthand how you're doing as well because we're really in this together. We're separate states, but we're the United States of America. I want to thank Governor Kemp who I spoke with again this morning. And Senator Warnock is behind me, Senator Austin Scott, Representative Sanford Bishop, old friends. In moments like this, it's time to put politics aside. Again, it's not one state versus other, it's the United States. You know, no Democrats or Republicans out here. It's what we do to make sure we restore the economy. Only Americans are here. It's been, I've been committed to being president for all Americans. In fact, all the major bills we've gotten passed from over a trillion dollar bill relating to infrastructure to a $368 billion bill on, on dealing with climate, a whole range of bills we got passed. Well, guess what? The fact of the matter is, more money from those bills has been spent in red states, red states than in blue states. More in red states than blue states. As I said, I didn't matter where it was or who needed help not based on party, who needed help. And I mean this sincerely. She can check it out. Our job is up as many people as we can, as many as we can. And also, by the way, when you do that, I hope we begin to break down this rabid partisanship that exists. I mean that sincerely. There's no rationale for it. There's no rationale for it. And so it doesn't matter who we help, it's who's needed help. And look, we're going to help as many people as we can. That's why. Days before the storm hit, I prepositioned extensive resources on the ground throughout the southeast, extensively. First responders, search and rescue teams, food, water, ambulances. Before Helene had made landfall, I also immediately improved emergency declarations your governor and others asked for. And so all of us could focus on the first responders and standing up emergency operations centers. That was the focus. And yesterday, I approved Governor's the Governor Kemp's request for a federal government to cover 100 percent, 100 percent of the cost for debris removal and emergency protective measures for three months, 100 percent. I must tell you, your senator had a little bit to do with that when he called me beforehand. But uh, all kidding aside, we're doing the same for Florida as well, as well as we're doing for North Carolina. folks. This is going to pay for the urgent work to clear the mud, remove the downed trees, provide temporary housing. And on top of this, the Department of Agriculture, and I have with me the, the Secretary of Agriculture today, is on the ground to support farmers, ranchers, and small businesses impacted by this storm. And FEMA teams are knocking, literally knocking on doors to register folks so they can receive assistance to buy what they urgently need from prescription drugs if they lost everything. Well, for example, I was just down in in Florida, one home, what people really worry the most about is not just losing their home, it's they lose everything that mattered to them. 
they move, they, 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 you know, lose that picture of their mom and their dad when they were kids. They look, I mean, all the things are personal. They look at that family jewelry, the ring that was the engagement ring, all those things. And I was the one rescuer who said there was a young family who had their entire, their entire home was lifted up and taken out into basically what we'd call a bayou. It's not a bayou, but a flat space on, out in the middle of a marsh. They went out there, they cut a road through with their vehicles. They got out there, they went in, and all they wanted to do is re just receive, get back what they, what they lost. They lost their home, but they were more, even more concerned about the personal things that mattered so much to the families. And so this is going to pay, as I said, this 100 percent to clear all the things that are needed to be cleared. And on top of this, the Department of Agriculture is on the ground supporting ranchers, farmers, and small businesses. And as I said, the FEMA teams are knocking on doors to register people so they can receive assistance. Think of all the people out there throughout the country here in the southeast that have, they need prescriptions filled. They don't have the money. They've lost everything. They don't even have to fill their prescriptions or baby formula. They can't afford it. They don't know where to get it, how to get it. And so we're registering folks so they can receive this assistance and buy urgently needed things they, they badly need. This direct assistance is now being delivered. It's being delivered now directly with more to come. But folks, this entire project is going to cost billions of dollars, not tens of thousands, not millions, not a billion, billions of dollars because it comes through, it goes through so many states. You know, and Congress has an obligation to me, it seems to me, to ensure the states have the resources they need. Let me close with this. I'm standing here beside Buck, the owner of this pecan farm. This afternoon, we, we talked, we got a chance to talk a little bit, and he showed me what he lost, talked about what he lost, and his dad. Acres of orchards wiped out, trees uprooted, debris everywhere. Decades of progress gone in a single instant. But through it all, Buck hadn't lost hope. In fact, he reminds me of another Georgia farmer who just turned 100 years old. President Jimmy Carter once said, tremendous progress can be made if we persevere through difficult challenges. This is a difficult challenge we're facing. This storm is extremely difficult for our country. To all the first responders, police officers, and volunteers who ran toward danger, to all the survivors and families who had their lives and livelihoods torn apart, we got to get we got a lot of work ahead of us. I was with them, as I said, I was down in Florida today, and a gentleman walked up and handed me a small pamphlet, a book that his wife had just written about how they lost their son. Their son died last time out in their home. You know, uh, a lot of people are in real trouble. But we want you to know, as I said, we see you, we're with you, and we're going to preserve and persevere to get through all this. Because, folks, this is the United States of America. We're not 50, we're the United States of America. And there's not a damn thing we can't get done, nothing beyond our capacity, when we work together and put politics aside. So God bless you all, and now it's my honor to introduce Buck, who's going to say a few words. Buck, podium is yours. Thank you. Uh, I, I never expected to be doing something like this. You know, I was uh, I just grew up to be a farmer. Didn't know I was going to follow up a president of the United States. So bear with me. Uh, it, it's a uh, first of all. I want, I want to thank all the delegation that's come. I, I, I appreciate y'all coming, and uh, it shows that you are giving attention to us. And uh, and it's not just it's not just me and my farm. I'm uh, <clears throat> I'm I'm standing in my backyard, but but I'm standing here to represent all of. Uh, my, my fellow farmers and producers too, uh, all across this region. A um, lot of damage. Um, this this storm was bad, so you don't have to take but a brief look to see the extent of damage, and that's real obvious. Um, but it's not just the farms; it's it's businesses, it's communities, and, uh, and I'm just one of many. But I do want to speak 
on the behalf of all of us. And uh, and so we do appreciate y'all being here. Um, so it's a, it's a difficult situation, you know. It's been a it's been a struggle, a mighty struggle. Uh, it's disheartening. It's uh, it's expensive. But uh, you come down, you just have to realize you you got to have help. That uh, we're not just gonna snap back from this. I mean, I, it's a uh, this is generational work that's involved in a perennial crop like pecans, and uh. So, you know, I, I, as I said, I appreciate everything, but, but I, can't, I can't qualify myself and I can't be myself unless, uh, before, I, before I say anything else or go any further, I know where I gotta get my help. I know where it comes from. I know where the United States gets help. And before I can say another thing, I, I, I ask and I invite each of you to, uh, bow your heads and and humble your hearts and I, I wanna I wanna lift up a prayer to our God in heaven. So if you would allow me to. Heavenly Father, Lord, you're good to us. You're always good to us, Lord. I I, I thank you for my faith and Lord I pray that, that this faith would encourage and help help others in my like situation. Father, I know that you're sovereign over everything. Lord, this is your creation. And you control and you see about everything and everybody in it. And Father, that there ain't a twig, a leaf, a branch, a root that you don't hold account of. And uh, you give us the opportunity to tend that for you. We're just managers as farmers. And uh, but Lord, we need we need the help. It all comes from you. And so, Lord, I, I, pray, I pray that help for me and my fellow growers and everybody involved in agriculture in this country. But Lord, I also pray for, for these that are here. Lord, you, you place me to be a farmer. You place them to be in the government. Lord, I'm standing here with the president and senators and congressmen and secretaries. Lord, you give them a place too. And, Lord, I pray your wisdom be imparted to them to help them to know what to do. With these problems and all the other problems, Lord, in this country. And Lord, I do pray for the perseverance of this country. I do love it, and I thank you for the opportunity of being here. I love this country. I love my state. I'm thankful I get to raise a family here, and I pray that, that we can continue on with so many others who are, who are uh, in such dire straits. So, Father, I ask, please, Lord, forgive this country. Forgive us individually. Forgive us corporately. And please, Lord, give us the help. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Y'all, I don't have a whole lot to say. I'm not, a, I'm, not, I'm not real big on knowing policy, so you won't get a policy speech from me. But I know some people that, that do know it real good, and I count on them, and I appreciate them. And they're out there at work on our behalf. But I, oh, if I can share something, it's just my heart. And, uh, and, and my heart is... Is, is for this to work and I got a lot of friends in the business and I can tell you they're the same way we don't look we don't look to get handouts or things like that but we do need the help and I know that God can send us that help some of that help in the way of, of uh, government administration and uh, we so much appreciate that and I appreciate y'all allowing me to speak and uh, through that administration that will be that will be dealing with us, particularly as farmers. It'll be coming through our Department of Agriculture and uh, and our Secretary of Agriculture, Tom Vilsack, is here, and I want to introduce him and allow him to come up and speak. And thank y'all for the opportunity. Thanks, Buck. Buck, thanks uh, very much, and thanks for centering us uh, today with your prayer. I want to start by saying uh, the millions of people have been impacted by the aftermath of this uh, incredible storm weigh heavily on all of our minds, and certainly at USDA, we join our federal partners in standing ready to help every step of the way. We know the losses to agriculture in the path of this storm are significant, though it will be some time before we know the full extent of those losses. We're prepared to work with states and local government officials to provide swift support to communities 
farmers, ranchers, producers, and small business owners affected by these storms. We are your partners in this effort. In addition to the fundamentals that farmers use to manage risk, such as crop insurance, USDA has a suite of disaster tools designed specifically for farmers and producers to help with things like repairing structures and fences, removing debris, help with soil erosion, pay for livestock losses, and provide assistance to help feed animals and pay for uninsured losses. It's our job to make sure that these tools are, are accessible to farmers, ranchers, and producers so that they can use them quickly. For example, we're working with crop insurance companies now to expedite payments so farmers will receive help in November, if not sooner. We're streamlining paperwork required to document losses and to assess the impacts of recovery activities so we can move more quickly. Some of our own offices, which were in nearby counties, have been hit by the storm. The USDA family and other counties stepping up to triage and field farmer inquiries. We know this is going to be hard for some time to come, and people will need our support. That's why I want to stress our stress hotline at 883-381-7243. If farmers need help, all they need to do is call 24-7. In addition to helping farmers, we're closely coordinating with our federal partners and have deployed over 160 staff to support FEMA's response to this storm, which includes an incident team to help clear roads here in debris in Georgia. We're pulling all levers across USDA from the Farm Service and NRCS to nutrition assistance to rural development. We recognize that the road to recovery is a long one, and USDA is committed for the duration. I'm going to turn it over now to Mr. Derek Dawson, a lifetime farmer here in the county who can describe more what he and his fellow producers are grappling with here in South Georgia. Derek. Good afternoon. Welcome to Lowndes County. Our county was hit with a Schedule 3 Helena hurricane which has affected large farmers and small farmers. We are so grateful for the linesmen, the first responders, and other essential workers that have worked diligently around the clock to restore power and keep us safe. Farmers in five southern states have been impacted by this storm, unlike anything they have experienced before. We need assistance. We need cleanup. We need rebuilding. We need restoring our lives on the family farms. We are thankful for our local and state and federal government for providing loans and grants to assist in the recovery process. We have lost billions of dollars in the timber industry and in the pecan industry and in the row crop industry. I'm a first generation farmer. My son, Dare Joshua, is a second generation farmer. I come to you standing before a president. What my grandmother and grandfather dream about doing, I'm living the dream here today. I'm thankful for this opportunity to speak in half of all farmers, but especially the small farmers, the minority farmers, the indigenous farmers, the black farmers, the ones that are not receiving the funds that we're supposed to receive. It's time that we change our way of doing business in the United States. It's time that we reach out to the family farm, the park farms here that has lost this much, the Dawson farm, the Crawford Farms, all the farms across the United States are suffering at this time. It's time to rebuild what we started on. When I was growing up, everyone had a hog, a cow, a chicken, a, a garden in their backyard. Now we don't have anything. We have to depend on big industries to feed us. We need to go back to where we came from, to the land, what God has blessed us with. With that saying, I thank you. And thank you for each and everyone that is here and for everything that everyone is doing. Speaker Johnson has said a supplemental can wait until after the election. What kind of timeline do you have in mind, sir? We can't wait. Can't wait. People need help now. Thank you. Mr. President, some South Georgia counties are still needing approval. Will that get approved? Yes. Thank you. Every county, thank you. How are these consultations with the Israel working? Thank you. 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 Thank you